Last month, I said that I wanted to attempt to read 12 books for the month of April. Well, I did not read 12 books. I read 13. My name is Lexi and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to talk about all of the books that I have read. Also, just as a side note, I am wearing overalls and they make me so happy. I just... <laughs> the reason I tried to read 12 books in the month of April was because I was participating in the Owls Readathon hosted by The Book Roast. So I will be reviewing all these books today in order from least favorite to most favorite, although I will say as a disclaimer, I had a weirdly good reading month and I didn't read any books that I didn't like. The only tea is the tea that I'm sipping, which is delicious. It's Georgia Peach Sweet Tea. Without further ado, let's go ahead and get started with the books. Okay, so the first book that I wanna talk about is Love a la Mode, and this is by Stephanie Kate Strom. This is about a girl named Rosie and a boy named Henry, and it is told in alternating perspectives. This is a young adult contemporary romance, and I thought it was really, really sweet. So Henry and Rosie both go to Paris for, it's like a semester slash year long, where it's a study abroad for their high school, but also it's more of a culinary art arts high school program. Specific things that I loved about this book was I loved the friendship dynamics in this book. I feel like in a lot of contemporary romances, whether it's in young adult or whether it's an adult, the author tends to kind of neglect the friendship aspect a lot of the times. And I feel like in any compelling story, friendship tends to be something that I really gravitate towards. I also feel like she did a great job developing a lot of the characters, specifically like the side characters. Things that I didn't particularly like. So this is just a personal taste, but I felt like there was a lot of day-to-day -day stuff that didn't pertain to the main storyline, and I found myself just a little bit bored occasionally with some of the side storylines. But I did really enjoy this book, and I would recommend it to anybody who specifically likes young adult contemporary romances, and also people who love books about food. Okay, the next book I want to talk about, The Mystery of Black Hollow Lane, and this is by Julia Noble. So this is about a girl named named Emmeline, and Emmeline has a mother who is sort of a famous child psychologist, and she goes around to different houses for a reality television show, and she decides to ship her daughter off to a boarding school in England. So Emmeline has never really known her father. He disappeared when she was three, and when she gets to the school, she starts to kind of wonder if maybe he also went to this school. So things that I loved about this book. First of all, I loved every single thing that Julia Nobel incorporated into this book, secret societies, boarding schools, friendships, middle grade, adventure, every single thing is like my dream team. There was a lot of really, really cool concepts kind of towards the back that pertained to the secret society that I was really, really into. And the subplot about finding out who her father was and his role in the school was really, really interesting. So things that I didn't love as much, I would have loved for this book to be longer. I did feel like it was rushed a little bit, but yeah, I thought it was really interesting. I thought it was a good read. If you're looking for a middle grade specifically with all of the things that I've listed, you're probably gonna like this. The next book that I read, I actually read with my friend Star, and it is Cajun Storm by Lee Bardugo. So this is just kind of the continuation of Alina and Mal's story with the Darkling. I don't really wanna say what this book is about because it definitely spoils a lot of the first book. We do get to see a character that I really liked a lot, and his name was Nikolai. I didn't really love Mal as much in this book, which was really frustrating. I didn't love Alina as much in in this book. I feel like Mal did something that really made me mad. I just like him a lot less after this book, which is kind of unfortunate, but that's okay. But yeah, I did like a lot about this book. Specifically, I like that we got to have more world building in this book. I loved that we learned a little bit more about the royal court in this book, and I love that Alina is kind of becoming a little teensy weensy bit corrupt in this book. So there was a lot that I did like about this book and a lot that I personally didn't love about this book. However, 
I am very excited to continue on with the series with Ruin and Rising next. The next book I want to talk about is A Study in Charlotte, and this is by Brittany Caballero. This is about the Sherlock Holmes descendant Charlotte Holmes, who is his like great, 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 great granddaughter. May actually probably not that many greats. I don't know how many greats. I don't, mm, I don't know. And then Watson's great, great, great grandson and how they meet at this boarding school. They are kind of framed for a murder and they have to work together to solve the murder and kind of clear their names. And it's really, really cute. I thought a lot of the clues and a lot of the things that happened in here were compelling and gripping. Surprisingly, I don't ship Charlotte and Jamie as much with this book. I'm wondering if like I'll ship them more in the next book because I am going to be continuing on in the series, but I just, I wasn't feeling it as much with this specific book. I don't know. I don't know why. I really don't know why. I mean, I feel like that's blasphemy to say on book two, but I just like wasn't feeling them together as much. I feel like Brittany Cavallero did a great job specifically with like internal monologue and with dialogue back and forth between the characters. I feel like she does an amazing job at making Charlotte Holmes kind of emulate Sherlock Holmes, but also be her own person, which I think would be really, really hard to do. And I felt like Jamie Watson and was just kind of a sweetie. So I love the whole thing. I highly recommend it if you like mystery or if you're into young adult mystery specifically, I think you'll like it. Next, we have got a middle grade and it is The Mysterious Benedict Society. And this is by Trenton Lee Stewart. I highly recommend this to anybody who wants specifically a middle grade that incorporates mystery and secrets. And again, secret societies. Listen, I will read anything about a secret society. That is something that I'm just really, really into. So this specifically follows a boy named Rainy. Rainy is an orphan and he finds an advertisement in a newspaper that says, are you a gifted child? He decides to go and see if he can get into this mysterious thing. They don't really, it's like very vague in the newspapers. It doesn't say it's a society or anything like that. It just says, are you gifted? And like, do you want to take these tests? And Rainey says, yes, I would like to take the tests and see if I'm gifted. My favorite part of the entire book was probably just the beginning. I feel like Trent and Lee Stewart just did an amazing job doing different puzzles, doing different riddles and like tests and things. It's just all about this group of orphans who kind of come together. They end up like passing a bunch of these tests and kind of forming this mysterious Benedict Society where they go on a mission for Mr. Benedict. There were a couple of things in here that I didn't love and a lot that I absolutely loved. First of all, I love the storyline. I thought that the storyline was really, really interesting and really entertaining. I also love that this has to do more with children's intellect and less with magic. I gravitate towards fantasy, but it was very refreshing to read a book about intellect and how intelligence can be a secret weapon and a secret power all in of itself. I just thought it was such a great message to kids. I also really, really enjoyed the different dynamics in the group. So there are four orphans and every single orphan I really feel like had a very strong character. And I feel like that's very difficult when you're making side characters to make everyone kind of unique and stand out, but also really cohesive together. Things that I didn't love. There was really only one specific thing that I didn't love. And I don't think it's a spoiler, but if you don't wanna take a chance at all, like it has nothing to do with the plot, it has to do with characters. But if you don't wanna take a chance at all, just mute me until the book is down. So the thing that I didn't love, there are two orphan boys and two orphan girls. The two boys pass all of the intellectual tests in the beginnings, but the two girls don't actually pass all of the tests. and. At first, I was kind of like, yeah, but they did get in, you know, with other means and like with other things necessary. So it's okay, I guess, that they don't all have the same intellectual properties. But then on their secret mission, they have to use their intellect to kind of pass some tests. And the only way that the girls pass is by cheating off of the boys when they really needed to use their brains specifically for like academics or for knowing things or for logic or for memorization. They just couldn't cut it next to the boys. You know, if you wanna have that like once in a story and then you wanna kind of drop that, that's okay. But the fact that they didn't pass their initial trials with their intellect and then the fact that they couldn't do it on the mission kind of bothers me a little bit that you've got two boys who can do everything and then two girls who aren't smart enough to do it. However, I do feel like they are great problem solvers and I do 
do feel like they both had very good character development and things like that. Like I really liked them. So that was the only thing that I disliked about this book. However, I do recommend the series. I feel like it was funny. I feel like it was compelling. It was really cute. And if you like middle grade, I think you're gonna like this. Okay, the next book I wanna talk about is Truly Devious and this is by Maureen Johnson. So this book is about a girl named Stevie Bell who is admitted to this very like elite and hard to get into private school. And the private school is basically for the most gifted students in the country. The school was originally created by somebody who wanted to make learning into a game. But then on the opening night, unfortunately, his wife and his daughter go missing. The only clue left for like where their whereabouts are or like who kidnapped them was a note left by somebody who signed it truly devious. So the reason Stevie specifically wants to go to the school is because she is trying to be like a crime investigator. She's really interested in forensics. She's really interested in mystery. She's really interested in solving puzzles. And she wants to see if she can figure out who truly devious is and like what happened all those years ago. While she is there, unfortunately, like mishaps happen obviously. And there are glimpses possibly of truly devious being there and a new mystery forms. So I really enjoyed this so much. I felt like this was not as much of a mystery as I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be a little bit more like a study in Charlotte where there's a mystery, we have to figure out who the bad guy is, and then things get resolved. And that's really not what happens here. Without a spoiler, it ended and I still was like, I don't know what's happening. Like I felt like nothing was solved and I didn't mind it at all because the story felt very complete. I really liked the way Maureen Johnson did the romance in this between Stevie and one of her classmates. And I won't say who because I feel like that might be a potential spoiler. I also felt like Maureen Johnson added so much humor in this, which I love. I felt like there was a lot of really good anxiety rep in here, which I also really appreciated. Stevie herself was a very, very well-written character, I think. I thought she was relatable. I thought her inner monologue was amazing. I felt like the way she interacted with the guy that she ends up liking was so cute. If you're interested in something that's a little bit funny, a little bit mysterious, pick it up is what I'm saying. So for my Owls readathon, I said that I wanted to read They Both Die in the End by Adam Silvera because I was like, oh, this has to be set in the future because they get a text message that says when they die. That obviously is like a futuristic thing. Well, lo and behold, I opened the very first page and it said 2017 and I was like, shit, because that obviously does not happen in the future. That's like in the past now. That's the only book that I subbed out for any of this. This is all my original TBR, except for that book. I had to put that book down and I had to try to find something futuristic. So I decided to reread Saga. And this is volume one by Brian K. Vaughn and Fiona Staples. I'm sure you've heard of Saga. I feel like everybody talks about Saga on booktube, but if you haven't picked it up, I highly recommend it. It's amazing. It's a little bit like a star-crossed lovers, but in space, there is like lots of war going on, but these two people from separate planets fell in love with each other and they have a daughter and the daughter is narrating everything. And this whole story is basically about everyone involved who's trying to kill the couple, the couple, the couple's families, the little girl's perspective. I will say that this is not PG-13. This isn't even like R, this is like X. There's some things in here that are just like a lot. So if you're a sensitive reader to things like graphic violence or graphic graphic sex, um, you might want to skip on this one, but if you're cool with that stuff, you're gonna, you're gonna like it. You, you're gonna, you should read it. Okay, the next one I want to talk about is What If It's Us, and this is by Becky Albertelli and Adam Silvera. So this was very unexpected, like how much I really, really enjoyed this. This is about two people who meet at the post office, and it's kind of like leading up into a meet cute, but then they're separated, and so it's a missed chance and a missed opportunity. A lot of the book is trying to find each other, their dynamics, their relationship, their friends. It's really, really cute. I so stand this book so hard. I felt like Arthur was such a well fleshed out character and I felt like Ben was such a well fleshed out character. They both had such unique voices. I actually listened to this on audio as well as read it. If you're going to pick this up, you should totally pick up the audio because they have two different voice actors for it and it was great. It was funny. It was cute. I felt like it was really realistic actually. There wasn't like a huge 
huge plot twist. It was just two people trying to see if they would work together and I loved it because I love them. So if you want like a happy, light, fluffy, young adult contemporary and you want it to be gay, I just, I recommend this. I recommend this so hard. Next, I read The Amulet, and this is by Kazo Kibushi. And the first book is The Stonekeeper. Now, I've had this book, and I read this about three or four years ago, but I want to actually reread the entire series, so I thought I would pick it up. So this is such a great middle grade. I think it's my favorite middle grade of all the ones that I've read. The art style is beautiful. The characters are really great. The storyline is everything. So this is about a little girl named Emily who moves to this old kind of dilapidated and crumbling house that belongs to her family after her father passes away and she moves there with her mother and her brother Naven. Once they are there, her mom is actually kidnapped and dragged by this weird mysterious monster through this little door. And so Emily and her brother Naven decide to go after her mother and try to rescue her. And the whole book is just them getting swept up into this other world, trying to figure out like how it came to be, where their mother is. There's like powers and magic and adventure. It's amazing. I recommend this series to absolutely everyone, whether you're in middle grade or whether you're an adult like I am. I think you're just really gonna like this. It's the one, you know, I loved it. Next, I read The Wicked King and this is by Holly Black. I can't really say a lot about this book because again, it's a sequel. So The Cruel Prince is about a girl named Jude who was a human and she was raised in the land of the Fae, there is some pretty dark relationship dynamic stuff that happens with another character there named Cardin, and it's just about navigating the world of the Fae. No spoilers. I really enjoyed the writing, and I really enjoyed the world and the world building specifically. I mean, Holly Black is like a master. If you like anything involving fairies, or if you like fantasy, you're gonna wanna pick up a Holly Black book. She's great. However, I was hesitant to pick this up because I don't like Jude and Cardin. Having said that, she changed my mind a little bit because even though I still don't love Cardin in that book, I liked him like 10 times more in this one. I felt like their relationship felt a little bit more healthy, was still on the edge of not great, okay? Like, a little bit not great. But it was something I could get more on board with, and there is like one scene in here where like it was, I was, I, I, I was jealous that Jude was making out with a fairy. I was like, wow, Cardin is the one right now. Like, yes, I'm, I'm really feeling this makeout session. The next book that I read was The Raven Boys by Maggie Steve Otter. <sighs> I loved it. So this is about a girl named Blue and her mother is a psychic and she lives with a bunch of other psychics. Blue has always been told by all the psychics in her life that her true love is gonna die after they kiss, basically. That's that's like the prophecy. So we know that Blue can't actually like fall in love, right? So enter Hot Boys. I feel like the best part of this was the writing. Like Maggie Steve Otter killed it. Like she nailed this. I would say that this was almost more of a character based story, which I love. I just felt like the characters were so well fleshed out. They were so well developed. Their voices were so completely distinct and I loved it. The next book that I wanna talk about is Daisy Jones and the Sixth and this is by Taylor Jenkins Reid. So I listened to this on audiobook and I highly recommend that you listen to this on audiobook if you're going to read this. This is about a girl named Daisy and Daisy is kind of like a spoiled rich girl. Her family doesn't really pay a lot of attention to her but she's got a lot of potential as a singer. She's got a lot of natural talent and she loves to sing and she loves to write her own music. She's also very, very pretty. So this is all about her journey collaborating with a band called The Six. I actually also read somewhere on the internet so like I don't know exactly how reliable this is because the internet is like a hit or a miss, okay? I don't know. But I did read that she was inspired a lot by Fleetwood Mac and like their dynamics, which I thought was really interesting. I felt like Daisy had a lot of really cool one lines in here that were very powerful. I felt like as a whole, this was a very female empowering book as well. I would say that I loved The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo a lot more than this, 
but I would also say that this was just really, really great writing. One thing that I think is interesting is that I'm not as much of a fan of Daisy Jones, like the character, as so many people seem to be. After a while, she really felt too selfish, too self-absorbed. I understood why she was doing certain things. I felt like she was an interesting character, and I loved some of the strength and femininity and just power that she exuded. Like, I did like that aspect of her character. But she's just a very, very flawed character, and she was not my favorite at all. Like, she's one of my least favorite characters. It's complicated. I have a complicated relationship feeling with Daisy Jones because I feel like I respect that she does what she wants and that she doesn't want to be taken advantage of in life. I liked that about her. But also, I just felt like she was really selfish. I did love a character in here called Camilla and I also loved Karen. Karen rocked my world. I loved Karen and her turtlenecks. Karen's the one. I love Karen so much. And finally, <laughs> the piece de resistance, the best book of this month and probably of the year, God's Grave by Jay Kristoff. This book is perfect. So this is the continuation of the book Nevernight, so I can't really say a lot about what it is about, which is unfortunate because I want to talk to everyone about what it's about. But it's just the continuation of Mia Corvair and her story. Nevernight is about Mia Corvair, who is essentially like orphaned because people killed her father at this big execution and she's just decided to get revenge and kill all of them. And so she grows up to try to get into this assassin school called the Red Church. And while she's there, she learns how to kill people. She gets really great at it, and then she kills people. And this is the continuation of Mia's lovely story. This is just so impeccable, perfect, flawless, amazing. Like, this is the Beyonce of books. This has an amazing female-female relationship. I felt like their whole dynamic was healthy and sexy and strong and sweet. Mia Corvair is just a badass, and she is not afraid to go after what she wants. And if you haven't read either either of them, please read Nevernight so that you can read this book. Like, Nevernight was great too. But I'm just saying, like, this is like one of my favorite books of all time. Well, you guys, that is it for my April wrap up. I read so many books that I loved. What was your favorite book that you've read recently? Please leave it down in the comments. Have you read any of these books? Let me know your thoughts. Until next time, book lovers, please keep your head in the clouds and your heart in a book. And I will talk to you later. Bye.